The mass shootings in Las Vegas, the violent massacre at Sutherland Springs Church, even the recent death of Charles Manson has many wondering how one person could be capable of killing so many. Our first guest, neuroscientist and professor of psychiatry and human behavior at UC Irvine, Dr. James Fallon, says the reason may be anatomical, and he is here today to take us inside a killer's brain. Doctor, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Dr. Fallon, while this is fascinating, it's also very scary. Mm. So talk to us about how a psychopathic killer's brain may be different. Uh, over 30 years, I've analyzed thousands of scans, PET scans, MRIs, et cetera, people who are normal, people with depression, schizophrenia, a lot of addicts, uh, Alzheimer's. But also, over the years, I always got these uh, scans from attorneys and neuroscientists who were in the middle of a trial, and they said, take a look at this guy's scan. You know, he's a murderer, and uh, what do you see? And so over, over the years, I saw a pattern, and, and, and people hadn't seen a pattern because they're hidden. These brains are hidden by all sorts of other damage. They get hit over the head as kids and all that. But there was a pattern there, and uh, so that's when I really got interested in this. So tell us a little bit about that pattern. What do people notice? Well, first of all, just in terms of what a psychopath is, a psychopath's a personality disorder. And personality disorders are those things in psychiatry that are, you can't reverse, unfortunately. It's not like a lot of other disorders that we look at. But the basic thing is that they're intraspecies predators. They're predators on other humans. And they have some, what are called positive traits. It's called fearless dominance. Mm -hmm. It looks like charisma. We walk in the Absolutely. room with Absolutely. And that's why they're so attractive and dangerous. A lot of energy. A lot of, a tremendous amount of energy. And, and also there's other group of traits that is called impulsive antisociality, which is the nasty part nobody likes. Mm -hmm. And that's the one that's most correlated with criminal behavior, very aggressive. But most psychopaths uh, are all around, or they have psychopathic traits. They may not be categorical clinical ones, and, uh, but they'll have the traits. And so the ones I was looking at were categorical, uh, real murders, and multiple murders. I can't believe how different it is. And you don't need to be a neuroscientist to, exactly. to see the significant difference there. That, it's almost like no half the brain's missing in, in terms area, of activity. In the limbic system, it's, it's absolutely turned off. And, wow. and this person was shown pictures of awful things and no response oh, to it. So I see it, but it was like, so that let me, just let me not ask lighting you a up there. That it's not no, activating. No, let me ask you a very controversial question. Let's just theoretically say someone gets convicted of murder. Maybe it's more than one person, and they're in prison, and they're coming up for parole, yeah. and you have this data, and the brain looks like that of a psychopath, which we just talked about with these individuals. It's a personality disorder. You can't necessarily rehabilitate yeah. that. Do you ever get to a point where you do that, and as a society, you say, you know, we can't, we can't afford for you to be out there because you will act on these impulses. You will kill again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is, it's is, a mistake is that... we keep making. And, you know, I, after these studies, I became much more against the death penalty because they actually don't think what they're doing is really wrong. Mm, they know right. you think it's wrong. Right. Because uh, to them, it's so, not. It's, it's not, not immoral. So it's like, so that's a, a weird chunk of it. <sighs> but the, yeah. the other thing is they always keep doing the same thing. Let out of prison. A week later, they're the raping system. and yeah. killing. And, yeah. and as a society, we have a romantic notion that everybody we is do. a good boy and good girl inside, right. and they're not. And the, and the pattern is, if you, if you look at the animation, uh, which is this rotating brain, which are always fun, you can see <laughs> that most of what you see is on the outside, the cortex. Well, the areas of the brain that are involved in psychopathy are not in the outside. You can't see them. They're in the middle line. They're in the inside. And it's part of what's called the limbic system or the emotional brain. Part of that emotional brain, you've heard of the amygdala, I'm sure, which is at the tip of the temporal. It's processing positive, negative emotions, uh, aggression, predatory behavior, sex, uh, rock and roll, you name it, addiction. But the other part, so that's kind of the id, and then the other part is the, called the orbital cortex, right above the eyes, because that's the orbits. And that's the part that's, that's really associated with moral behavior, moral reasoning. Well, it turns out that the, in everybody, in everybody's brain, these are in balance. The normal thing, because there's, there's a time to kill, there's a time for sex. Psychopaths don't have that context. Mm -hmm. And those two areas are turned off in these people. So that's like the superego, there's no shame there, right? Yeah, the orbital cortex, like the superego, it's your conscience.